Wave Breaker the Rescue Coaster at SeaWorld San Antonio is an intimate family launch coaster. Built over the park's central lake, Wave Breaker is fittingly themed to jet skis and the conservation efforts of the SeaWorld chain. Intamin multi-launchers have been getting a lot of attention lately, but Wave Breaker is a ride that doesn't get much attention. But should we be talking about it more? In this video, I will be reviewing Wave Breaker. In 2013, the Blackfish documentary was released. The film heavily criticized SeaWorld and it severely damaged the chain's public perception. Attendance started to plummet across their parks. So SeaWorld decided to transfer their focus more on amusement rides, specifically roller coasters, to drive attendance and shift the focus from their animal shows. Wavebreaker was the perfect storm. The coaster opened in 2017 for a surprisingly high cost of $18 million. Intamin launch coasters do not come cheap, especially when they're built over water. To build Wavebreaker, SeaWorld had actually drained their lake and used rubber dams while the ride was under construction. SeaWorld also used the coaster as an opportunity to highlight the chain's conservation and rescue efforts. The queue line has stories from some of 30,000 rescues that SeaWorld has been involved with over the past 50 years. This establishes the tone for the main ride, which has riders sitting on jet skis. And these trains look incredible. The detail on the jet skis is absolutely fantastic. Before I rode Wavebreaker, I figured it would have the traditional motorcycle style seating you see on Zamperla or Vacoma motorbike coasters. On those rides, you are forced to lean forwards and the restraint presses against your back. That is not how Wavebreaker is set up, not at all. On Wavebreaker, you are seated in the traditional sit down position with a familiar lap bar, but your upper body has the freedom to lean forwards and grab the jet ski's handles to ride in a position similar to that of a motorbike coaster. I think it was a unique design choice since it offers guests the opportunity to ride in two different positions depending upon what they find most comfortable or enjoyable. In terms of seat selection, I recommend the front row. The forces are fairly similar regardless of where you're sitting, but the visuals and sense of speed are superior up front. You get the best sensation that you're on a jet ski with an unobstructed view ahead of you. Wavebreaker often has the longest line of all of SeaWorld San Antonio's rides. This coaster has always run just one train in all my visits, so it routinely has a 30 to 45 minute wait, even when the other coasters have minimal wait times. For that reason, I strongly recommend hitting this coaster early, unless you have quick queue. One wrinkle is that SeaWorld's hours for this coaster can vary upon the day. I've sometimes found Wavebreaker to have a delayed opening, and other times, it can close early. The park does post the rides hours daily, so I'd check once you get to the park so you can plan accordingly. One good thing though is that this Intamin multi-launch coaster doesn't appear to have much downtime from my experience. Once dispatched, you slowly round a corner and enter the ride show building. To be perfectly honest, I am not a fan of this ride show building. It feels rather cheap, which is surprising given the ride's price tag. It looks like a corrugated warehouse on the outside, and it's pretty empty on the inside. In front of you, you just have this blue rolling door, and on your sides, you have a series of televisions that notify you which animal you'll be rescuing. There are a few different possibilities, three I believe, but they don't impact the ride experience in any way from this point forwards. Usually I enjoy the pre-launch theatrics, but the ones on Wavebreaker really don't add anything for me. Compare this to the one on Manta at SeaWorld San Diego, where the visuals and music really get you amped up for the subsequent launch. The launch countdown on Wavebreaker is sort of weird. You are reminded to look forwards repeatedly, yet the televisions, which again are on your side, have a visual countdown that people are staring at. I would recommend looking forwards because it's quite uncomfortable launching when your head is turned sideways. I really wish the TV was positioned above the launch door to prevent this issue. Wavebreaker's tire propelled launches. I didn't think much of them going into the ride, but they have some solid punch to them. They can't beat Intamin's other launches, but I would take Wavebreaker's launches over something like a Premier Rides launch, and that's something I did not expect going into this ride. You then coast over a giant S hill. This element uses a majority of the coaster's speed, and it's elongated too, so it offers no airtime, unfortunately. In fact, I'll bury the hatchet now. Wavebreaker 
has no air time on any hill throughout the whole ride. The first hill just offers some faint laterals up front. You then twist over the water and remain very close to the surface for the rest of the first half. This is when Wavebreaker is at its best. The quick turns and undulations combined with the rod's proximity to the water really sells the fact that you're riding on a jet ski. So while I think the pre-launch sequence is a bust, the theme is perfect for the remainder of the ride. Wavebreaker focuses more on the visuals than the forces, but the two 180 degree turns in the first half are quite tight and they pull some solid positive G's. The second of these U-turns immediately leads into the ride's second launch. This gives the train a speed boost to the ride's maximum speed of 44 miles per hour or 71 kilometers per hour. The launch is followed by another giant and elongated hill. This one is the ride's tallest point, standing 61 feet or 19 meters tall above the water. Instead of the front getting laterals on this hill, the twisting drop on this one gives the faint laterals for the back this time. You drop over the water and head towards an island. You then traverse another tight 180 degree turn that is equally as forceful as the two in the first half. You then head back towards mainland over a dud of a speed hill and then you gracefully and gradually cross over the midway. It's a neat visual off-ride. You then twist into the brake run, ending the 2,600 foot or 792 meter long ride. Wavebreaker holds its speed pretty well from the first launch. The elements are proportional to speed. The ride was designed quite smartly to accentuate the ride's modest speed. The ride may not have too many great elements outside of the launches and forceful 180 degree turns, but it's mostly about the visuals and sensation about being above the water. And last but not least, the coaster is glass smooth, so it's extremely re-rideable. So what would I rate Wavebreaker? I would give this coaster a 6 out of 10. This coaster is a bit of a mixed bag. The ride's placement over the water and jet ski theme is perfect. This ride fits in very well at SeaWorld. The visuals being above the water are really nice and the two launches and 180 degree turns have more force than you may expect based on the ride's modest stats. However, I do wish the pre-launch sequence was better executed and not all the elements on this coaster add to the experience. Several of the maneuvers over the water sort of feel like filler, but considering this is a family coaster, that's ultimately okay in the end. One note on that though, I do find it funny that Texas Stingray has a lower height limit than Wavebreaker even though that is a far more aggressive ride. I wish Wavebreaker was able to have a lower height limit because the intensity matches that of a family coaster, but it has a 48 inch height limit due to the train design. So those are my thoughts on Wavebreaker the Rescue Coaster, the Intamin Jet Ski themed multi-launch coaster. What are your thoughts on Wavebreaker? Do you enjoy this coaster? I would love to hear your thoughts on Wavebreaker down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching 